2024. What a year for AI with breakthroughs happening at lightning speed. Did you find it tough to keep up? From a single dominant model to reasoning and a fierce race between AI powerhouses. Finally ending with China shaking things up with DeepSeek. To make sense of it all, we asked AI leaders from top global companies, what stood out in AI for them in 2024 and why was it so impactful? Here's what they had to say. Um, there is a lot of hype with, um, and there is a lot of reality in that hype uh, is that, you know, AI is going to make a lot of people uh, out of the job because it's going to do most of the work for us. That's true for developers. That's true for testers and so on and so forth. And I think this is the next level of collaboration where AI just isn't answering questions. It's creating solutions in real time. And we see this in enterprise production. In fact, the last... Um, update of the year was DeepSeek, um, which is very interesting. They were able to train a model which compares with uh, GPT level performance. And what's happened is that we're slowly moving towards the stage from how do you solve a problem to how do you build a solution? So what I'm seeing over the year, last 12 months is to have people play around with more and more of the air. Welcome to the Neural Talks, your gateway to the forefront of AI innovation. I'm your host, Ranjit Malarkor, and together we'll explore the AI revolution with the brightest minds pushing boundaries and shaping the future. Through candid conversations, they share hard-won insights as we unlock the transformative power of AI. Get informed, get inspired. This is the future, and you're in the front row. I think what stood out for me in 2024 is actually putting all these POCs that we have done in JNAI to production. Um, so overall across the globe, um, there are like, based on how you count about 30 to 40 uh, instances where we have gone live. Um, so speaking from that experience, I think what stood out for me in AI is how you retrieve content uh, is really important than, than, the, than the other parts of your tech. So retrieval, the R in retrieval augmented generation, um, that's a classical 20, 30 year old problem. So focusing on information retrieval is a key. I think that's, if you have to summarize one thing that happened in 2024, um, and you, you are about to build or you're thinking of building something with Gen AI, uh, focus on investing in your retrieval, because that's the biggest shock if you're a learner uh, and you think you will have a vector store and you're done, and um, that's the biggest shock that you will uh, get because it doesn't work that way. So focusing on retrieval is one. Uh, if I can add one more, um, there is a lot of hype with, uh, and there is a lot of reality in that hype, uh, is that you know AI is going to make a lot of people uh, out of the job because it's going to do most of the work for us. That's true for developers, that's true for testers, and so on and so forth. My experience playing with it for like a year now is that it's another tool in your toolbox, right? Like you get a lot more productive with it. Uh, you get a lot done. And to an extent, it almost feels like magic. But in end of the day, it's a sharper tool, right? Like imagine switching from your text editor to an IDE. That's a one jump. Now you have this productivity tool. Uh, in the beginning, it looks like you just need English and you can build software. But... If you have worked with it over and over, you would feel that you still need system thinking. You still need to break a complex problem into smaller steps, right? Like as an engineer, that's all we do. And then development is this art of translation. Now more and more that is going to be disrupted by AI, but your thinking is not going to be disrupted, right? You're still in control. You are the one who's breaking down into smaller problems. Agree there are agentic systems on the horizon that is going to um, scratch that surface as well. But I would say um, now is the best time to learn AI, right? Like uh, that's how I want to end uh, 2024 is that there is a lot happening. And I and I used to joke this that as an architect, as a builder, you, you used to have like just three boxes uh, in your toolkit, like a UI, API, and database. Now we have the fourth box. Uh, you have to figure out how to use it. For me, in 2024, the biggest shift in AI is the move to truly contextual cross-domain systems that can integrate across text, audio, imagery, and even, even real-time sensor data. Uh, you know, I'd like to call this generative multimodality, where 
AI can synthesize information from diverse inputs and produce equally diverse outputs from um, text to video. And I think one example of this is, you know, we have AI capabilities where, for example, a system can, wa a system can watch a live drone feed. It can read memos and you can feed it, you know, 20, 30 pages of information about a supply chain delay or about a logistics problem. And then it could also synthesize voice and speak to a logistics manager. And, you know, maybe two years ago, this was science fiction. It, it, this has happened in 2024, right? All of this in one workflow. And you know, it's also known as agentic systems. And, and I think this is the next level of collaboration where AI just isn't answering questions. It's creating solutions in real time. And we see this in enterprise productivity apps, in crisis response, creative industries, um, even personal assistants, right? So I think that for me is the, sort of the biggest shift in AI in 2024. 2024 was a very exciting year for AI. It has become a year, in my opinion, where we are seeing an inflection point. If you look back, Gen AI burst into the scene in end of 2022, just two years back, we had the first release of ChatGPT. And uh, it was a, a, one of the first foundational models which was released. And we saw a great amount of traction and excitement around uh, ChatGPT. What's changed in 2024 is uh, GPT is not the only uh, foundational model. In fact, they were leaders in terms of uh, model performance at the beginning of 2024. But very soon, by the end of 2024, they're just one amongst a bigger pack. You now have Gemini and Google's models performing just as well, and also Claude uh, the range of cloud models from Anthropic is uh, uh, really uh, stirring up a lot of excitement. Not only that, we also are seeing extremely high um, uptick in the uh, uh, open source models. So these are closed source models from ChatGPT and Gemini and Cloud. But we're now seeing a, a bunch of open source models like Meta's Llama models and then Mistral, and a couple of models from China, like Quen and DeepSeek, which are really bursting into the scene with extremely good model performance. In fact, the last um, update of the year was DeepSeek, um, which is very interesting. They were able to train a model which compares with uh, GPT level performance in a shoestring of a budget by simply using GPT's output as training data. So you've got to imagine what that means to the uh, ecosystem. If we can train models by using other foundational models, where does uh, uh, IP, um, you know, I, where does the intellectual property begin and end? It, it's a very interesting question. The other thing which we are seeing is a ramp up of the ecosystem around AI. So this is the whole vertical stack from hardware up to cloud to software for serving inferences. And this is the inference market is becoming really large and it's, uh, it's ratcheting up. We're seeing a, a big increase in how these models are performing, mainly due to uh, increases in context window size and, and techniques which employ multiple models to improve model performance, like speculative decoding and uh, distillation approaches. So all in all, I think 2024 was is, is the year where, where we are seeing a transition from something being new to something that's going to scale to uh, 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 epic proportions in the coming years. I think the dominant theme this year has been essentially the incredible progress made in AI, especially generative AI. And I think when we first encountered this gargantuan beast, we were asking ourselves, I mean, our reactions were all over the place. At one end, we were overawed by this and we were saying, hey, can this do everything? Okay. But at the other end, we were also looking at it and saying, hey, it doesn't know how many hours there are in strawberry. Right. So we're still sort of grappling with it. We're still trying to calibrate our expectations. And the fact is that from a business standpoint, investment is calibrated to expectations first. And results only much later, right? So that happens. Okay. What has also happened is that while there has been this period of discovery of what it can do and so on, there is a certain degree of coherence that's slowly coming in. And what's happened is that we're slowly moving towards the stage from how do you solve a problem to how do you build a solution? 
right so we're worrying about failure modes we're worrying about how do you put in a pipeline that goes all the way to the result and so on so i think there's a huge degree of impact there so we stopped worrying about how the power plant works and started worrying about how do i build a better light bulb right personally i think what's also happened is that with you know it's been a period of introspection i'm trying to understand what does it mean to be a technologist in this brave new world okay now it's not like everything i knew is suddenly obsolete but at the same time i'm also trying to understand okay how do i become how do i stay relevant when there are so many newer things to pick up but the interesting part is that the pace of progress and the extent to which some of these problems have become you know straight forward has meant that i spent a lot more time on problem discovery which means that as a data scientist i get closer to the business because now i'm worrying a little more about what is the right problem to solve why is this relevant to solve so i think that's probably been the thing that stood out for me in this era ai in 2024 has been very interesting to me it has become a tool for the masses and not necessarily an exclusive a high investment area or a application so what i'm seeing over the year, last 12 months is to have people play around with more and more of ai it it could be a very simple task like uh my shopping list you asking gen ai for that or somebody wants to write a letter to their uh, department head or to a school authority or any other uh, instance they are able to use gen ai and do it so it's becoming more and more common and in product development which is an area of my interest i am seeing more and more people trying to double that with writing code or uh, writing a test, genetic a test script and those are common applications which i see but there are much more wider applications so that's that's where i think 2024 is it's it's kind of coming of age of the democratic ai if i can say that hope you enjoyed this episode of the neural talks hit subscribe or follow us on linkedin to stay informed of many more great episodes on ai coming up where the neural where humans meet ai